President's visit to Kenosha. Let's bring in former military intel officer Steve Rogers. Uh, Steve, what do you think the president needs to accomplish in Kenosha? Well, he's already accomplished something very significant. Uh, to his credit, he's where a commander should be, if you will, on the field of battle. He's going to meet with the victims of the uh, crimes that have been committed there. He's going to be meeting with the first responders. He's going to get a lot of facts and a lot of information, and he's going to bring comfort. And he's going to bring people assurance that the president of the United States and our government knows exactly what is going on there and what they need. And I believe somehow, some way, he's going to deliver what that city needs, and that is safety. Now, you say he's meeting with the victims. Some people would claim that Jacob Blake was among the victims, and I'm, I'm certainly not going to turn him into a hero. But there's some on the left that have asked him, are you going to meet with Jacob Blake's family? And at this point, there are no plans to do that. How do you respond to that? Well, there's still an investigation going on, and I believe that is going to be very, very important uh, for that investigation to be completed before anyone makes phone calls or visits anyone. That's a call that the White House would have to make, but being a law, former law enforcement officer, I think they're just being careful not to be perceived as interfering with that investigation one way or the other. And when you think back on the Jacob Blake situation, since you're a former uh, law enforcement, what went wrong there? Well, what went wrong is that uh, Mr. Blake did not uh, obey the commands of the police. Right. I mean, all you got to do is obey the command. We've said that over and over again. And I've got to tell you, many times I have pulled people over and they'd go under a seat. In this case, I understand there was a knife. There may have been a child in the back. That officer, in my view, based on what I've seen, was justified in doing what he did. If he could articulate clearly, and I believe he could, that he believed his life was in danger. Keep in mind, they fought this guy before he ended up uh, going into that car. And I think he did try the taser, and it didn't work. And we know that <clears throat> he was been investigated for sexual assault and that there was a problem right there at the scene, like you said. And I pointed this out on our program before. I have a relative that keeps a gun in a slot um, of the car. When somebody goes to their car, you don't know what they're going for. Well, you're right. It takes a split second for someone to grab a gun and to shoot a cop right in the head. Uh, so that's why I say all he had to do was put his hands up, I give up, and we wouldn't be here today. But a lot of people don't do that. And sadly to say, the politicians, that's your Democrat socialists in these cities, immediately go to a microphone and blame the police. Uh, which is really a mess when it comes to an investigation. But I believe that the uh, police in this case were justified. But let's see what happens as we move forward. Well, then you hear the criticism, Steve, and I just wanted to get your take on this, that there were seven shots fired. And I've asked people, what, is two enough? Is three? I mean, I don't know at that point whether it matters. But do you have a reaction to that? Yes, I do, because I was involved in a fatal shooting back in the 90s. So I know how it is to get involved in these things. When you're shooting, your adrenaline is pumping. Yeah. Uh, it's just pumping. And all you're believing is that if I don't stop the threat, he's going to kill me. So uh, there's a lot of issues involved with that, your state of, you know, your mental state, your physical state. So uh, no cop wants to go out and shoot anybody. Look, no police officer wants to go home knowing that he shot someone. But uh, I believe these are physical issues and mental issues that really come upon a cop when they're in danger. So as we look at Kenosha, kind of part and parcel of what we're seeing in some of these other cities going on, uh, what do you think is the, the ideal message the president should send? I, I know you're talking about safety or talking about security. Um, how does he get that across so people uh, take that message beyond Kenosha itself? Well, he brings that message to the very people in the communities who have been victimized. They want help. They don't care what it takes. Bring that help. So the president has been very clear that if necessary, he will bring overwhelming force to these cities. Now, let's talk about overwhelming before the mainstream media gets upset. He's not talking about excessive force. He's talking about overwhelming numbers of law enforcement officers to be proactive, to find out who the leaders of these anarchist groups are and to get them out of there. And then you'll see this thing neutralized. Look, it's the politicians, the Democrat socialists don't want the help. The victims are begging for help. And once again, President Trump is delivering. Steve, I don't know the answer to this, but may I ask where you're located? 
I'm located in Nutley, New Jersey, 15 miles west of New York City, and what a mess there. <laughs> okay, then I was going to ask you about New York and how different it is now than it was like 20 years ago or even 10 years ago. You've seen a change. Why has it changed? It's changed because, once again, we go back to a socialist agenda that is being advanced by a Democrat party that's no longer the party of JFK or FDR. It's the party of Lenin, Stalin, and Marx. And I'm not just saying that as a talking point. It is a fact. People's rights are no longer uh, being enforced. Uh, look, the theater district is gone. Restaurants are closed forever. Central Park is a mess. Uh, these are politicians who care nothing about the people but only care about their political future. But it's backfiring. People are leaving New York and they're coming here to New Jersey. So it's, uh, 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 that's why it's happening. They, they've got to get back to law and order. Rudy Giuliani, he was mayor of that city. I went into that city when he was mayor. He cleaned that city up where it was such a beautiful picture, but it's not like that now. It was great. You had the broken window policy. You know, vandalism leads to other bad things, and he put a stop to that. So uh, it's a lot different now. These guys are committing crimes, and they're out on the street within an hour or two. Well, we could put an end to it. We could put an end to it, and that's in November. We've got to elect President Trump. In my view, we've got to elect a Republican Congress and Senate uh, because uh, the law, they're the law and order party. The Democrat socialists, including Joe Biden, by the way, who has said nothing about this until recently, uh, they're not concerned about the people and the, the, the victims. So I tell people, have hope, have hope and prayer. We believe in God, and we're going to pray that we're going to come through this, and we're going to win because we're Americans. And we always win. All right. Thank you, Steve Rogers from the Garden State. Thank you, sir, for joining us. Turning My now pleasure. to a political shocker, a member of the Kennedy family.